All right, so we're going along with our little Siemens program right here, and we have this tied into factory I.O., which um, normally I use Easy PLC or the machine simulator, but in this case, I'm using factory I.O. And the way I have it is if you push the start button and the stop button is not pressed and the sensor right here is not made, the conveyor will run and it will run off an Basically, I've changed this the roller conveyor to an integer or to an analog value, and basically, um, I'm just saying, okay, 1.0. Um, now, at 1.0, it's, it's yeah, it's kind of slow, but at the same point, if it hits the sensor, what it does is it actually converts it to a backwards command, which is negative 1.0. Now, if I hit the stop button at any given time, it will stop. It will throw. A zero command in the speed reference so just to show you how that works all this is working right here you can easily see that now I'm gonna let it get to this to the actual um, uh, sensor itself but just to kind of speak about that you see this value up here you can see all the values and if you wanted to, to see all that all you have to do is show tags and dock all tags right if you wanted to want to see all your tags that are active on uh, factory IO um, but again when it comes down to it um, there are different drivers for the for the factory IO and it depends on which one you have if you do not have the pro version um, so I just bought the Siemens version just because of the simple fact of that's what I'm actually you know actually testing and, and going along and um, you know I've been primarily a Rockwell person but now that I'm an integrator now I need to learn this as well along with other PLCs so it, it kind of, it's kind of helpful um, not having to continuously you know build things and uh, off easy PLC and our machine simulator this already has some stuff that's pre-done so I can go ahead and do you know just basically hit the ground and start programming and, and kind of just test everything out now again right here if I hit the stop button it throws that that zero value in there you see that so throws that zero value in there and then when I start it back now eventually what I can do is just throw in another sensor right here and that's pretty simple to do right up here uh, you cut the simulation off and once you cut the simulation off you can come back and actually uh, basically add another sensor and then you map the sensor and then you will have, have two sensors up here and we'll have to add that to our tag database and then come back in and that way I can just go sensor one go this direction, sensor 2, go that direction and let the box just go back and forth and still have my zero command in there for the stop. Uh, but just like I'm saying right now, this is currently the way I have it programmed. Uh, again, I will continue to build on this. I mean, I'm just kind of, you know, just kind of playing around with it just to, you know, see what what you can and can't do, what you, what's the benefits of this and what's the benefits of that and uh, what makes more sense and stuff like this. So um, just kind of coming through, you know, showing you how that works. Uh, it's really, really, really simple projects. It's really simple. It's just like the very first one I did off a machine simulator, a box going back and forth. So uh, with that said, you know, you come in here and pick your like sensors or whatever the case may be. And you just pick a sensor and throw the sensor on there. Um, I can't remember which one, like this one right here. I'm not sh yeah let's just duplicate that and then throw that right here and see we get our spots right and then make sure we have we want to duplicate obviously duplicate duplicate the actual reflector too and make sure all that's going to be working right and if you wanted to see like if you wanted to kind of I, I use my mouse but you can come over here and see is that lined up properly right and it looks like it is lined up properly so we'll drop that back down we'll come back over here to our file and drivers and you see that it's not in there I only have sensor 1 since I don't have sensor 2 so go to go into configuration Let's see, go into configuration right here. Why is it not letting me go into configuration? Let me open this up a little bit better. It takes just a minute for that to populate. And you see the, let's see, now, oh, there we go. 
configuration and let's see we can add inputs so we got four inputs we want five inputs and that's perfectly fine so we'll add the fifth input which is going to be a, it says retro reflective sensor and we'll we'll use that actually we didn't have to have five we already had a spare slot uh, but we will actually we can come over here and change that we can change the name of that as well so this one says sensor um, we're going to do all and then we'll just call this uh, we'll call this uh, front sensor if I spell that right yeah, if anybody's watching any of my videos you can tell um, front sensor and then we'll have back sensor we'll have back sensor right here back sensor and then we have front we have back sensor and we have front sensor okay so now we have those in our system and what we need to do is what we did before is we came in and looked at this and that we looked at our drivers we need to map this back sensor to or not the back sensor we need to map the front front sensor to input three Okay, so that solves that. And then we'll minimize this again, come over here and go into our tags. I'm currently online, right? So I'm gonna th go into our my tags right here and this will be called, uh, we'll call that front sensor, front sensor. There we go. All right, and then we're gonna make this a bool. So we'll come over here and make that a boolean. And then pick our, our sensor. This is going to be an input. This is gonna be, and why is it going to a memory? There we go. And then we need to pick three. And that's actually zero, I'm sorry. So address zero, bit three. Address zero, bit three. Okay, so now we have this in our communication, so we to communicate outward to the actual system. And we can come over here. So after we get that, we can come back over here. We need to go offline. And then we'll make some changes to this. So um, this is a front sensor. Uh, so we'll keep that like it is. Um, this is going to be the back sensor. Actually, we keep going back and forth. So we need to change this a little bit. So we have our start button, we have our stop button. Uh, start button can be merely just something like, uh, we don't necessarily need to have it like this, but we'll keep it like this. And We'll also have, instead of having it jump like this, what we'll do is come in and have a delete right here, add a bottom, and let's delete that. And have the bottom right here, and then come in and add sensor 2 so we need to say okay this is going to be since uh, the front sensor and then what we'll do is we'll come in and do an empty box and we'll drag that up there and delete this so we'll come in here and do that this is going to be a move just very simple We'll move that in there and then we'll put a value of negative 0.1 and then we'll call this R because that's our conveyor speed. So we have our front sensor come over here, front sensor as long as that's made 
and then when our back our our actual our back sensor um, we could change the tag name if we want but we will keep it the way it is it's perfectly fine the way it is um, we don't necessarily need this anymore because this is going to be well this will be going forward and then actually this needs to be actually and if I think about this correctly this is the back sensor it's just the front sensor so if the front sensor is made it needs to go forward it needs to go forward and if the back sensor is made then the back sensor needs to drive it so if the back sensor is made so this needs to be like this and like that but at the same time we need to make sure yeah we need to make sure that this is because right now I'm using the opposite so that's very simple so what we can do is we can have this come over here and actually say this is made so this is going to go backwards I'll just drop this when this is made and keep this like it is and we'll say this is going to be X front okay so that's going to drive it the opposite that's going to stop it per se so it's already running backwards it's going to stop it and then this will be the combination of latching this back in latching this back in so we'll just come over here and delete this and throw this like this because this won't be made at this point will this be made it will I think it will be made So this will be latching it back in. Let's just see how that works. Because I'm I don't want to make this too complex, but I want to see if we get it to work. And so we'll download real quick and get everything working. Make sure we're talking. We have our PLC tags working. Everything is working over here. We can go over here to drivers. To make sure that everything is good everything is good in the drivers so we'll go ahead and see how this coincides and it's being a little slow and it's it's like i don't know for some reason why it's i have many throw more resources on my my vm or something but like if it's not in full mode i don't know why like some of the buttons are being slow but as long as we have our, our checkbox right here, everything's good. Okay, so let's go back and let's minimize this again. Let's put our simulation up here. Let's cut it on. Oh, let's, go, let's run it. Okay, so we did that, that portion right. So we're now going back and forth. We didn't have to start it because it's it automatically started in reverse so our currently our sensor is not made and this sensor is not made so we need to change the might need to change this down here because I, I got a feeling it's gonna run off which is, is part of what you're doing right that's part of what you're programming yeah, I got a feeling. Oh, it actually stopped because it hit the box. So, okay, no worries. Okay, so stop. And we need to make sure that it still stops like it should. So, what we did wrong is we need to come in here and make this like this. And we need to come in, download one more time verify that is set up correctly 
and I wasn't trying to draw the stuff out like this, but you know, hey. Okay, so we start the system. It's gonna run forward, it's gonna run up to this one. And as soon as the sensor is not made, or the sensor is made, the very first, this back sensor, as soon as that's made, it's gonna come over here and let it go the opposite direction. And let's make sure that does happen. Make sure that does happen. And it's hitting the... Okay, well it did hit the photo eye. But it's probably a alignment issue. I think I moved the carton or something. But we can, we can adjust that. Let's see, this is D. So we just need to make sure our photo eyes are lined up better. That's all. Let's just make sure this bottom section works. So as soon as this is not made, then theoretically it should come over here and throw a one back in here and then go the opposite direction. Okay, so as soon as that happened, it, it did that. So we've effectively have the system working now the way it you know was originally designed. Besides the box being a little crooked, and I'm not going to pick it up because it goes haywire when you pick it up. So um, I do need to see about why the photo I did not catch it. Why did the photo I not catch it? Is it it hit the box for some reason so we need to we need to verify that we need to like adjust our box or something when we first start either way our logic is working I know it could be done a lot simpler a lot easier but when it comes down to it I mean I, if I hit the stop button and then if I hit the start button it's gonna come back here so that the point of it is is to show some analog and show the way this is designed and show the like adding a component on you know just uh, the factory IO and saving the scene as far as that goes you know just making sure everything works I want to come over here save the scene and yeah I do want to save my scene and then come over here and make sure I save my program and then that's that's just about all I wanted to kind of go through you know like I said I'm just trying to you know kind of get this like this is my rusty spot so I'm trying to kind of you know, like I said before, you know, 15 minutes a day working on something that you hadn't been working on or working on something to better yourself. Again, f at least 15 minutes a day or more, always try to better yourself because you never know where you're going to be headed. And now I'm an integrator, so I need to know this stuff. So I need to know, you know, how to work with Siemens. I need to know how to work with Omron now and, and especially with Rockwell. I'm not going to lose any of these things that I've been working on for the over these years I'm just a little rusty on on Siemens to be frankly honest with you so with that said hope you learned a lot from this video and we'll see you guys on the next one